What's up, guys? Welcome to Double Crown Talk Time, the show on YouTube.com slash Double Crown Games, a weekly show where we talk about video game related news or things that happen in our lives or whatever <laughs> we feel like talking about. Um, that well, there's no video week. game related news other than what I'm going to talk about. What are you going to talk about? Anyways, my name's Matt. And I'm Richard. You can find us on Twitter. Uh, if you like the video, give us a <laughs> like, do a subscribe, put a comment down in that little box and hit enter. I don't know if that'll actually work, so I think be you sure gotta, to hit, I think send. hit post or send or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That happened to your dad, right? I don't know. He was doing something. He, hey. he commented on our old Bumblebee video, though. <laughs> he did that recently. Did he put in Bumblebee? He wrote Bumblebee. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Richard's dad, Richard. Yeah, Richard. <laughs> it's so funny because it looks like I'm just commenting on our own videos, uh-huh. but under like a different account. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't him. It ain't me. There's two of them. There's, there's multiple Richards. Anyways, what are we talking about today? We're talking about Rogue One. A Star Wars story. Is that a new game coming out? No. But you know what a new game coming out is? Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah, there you go. You remember that got announced March 21st. Today. Yeah, so it was, all the leaks were true. So there you go. Star Wars, the game. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the exact experience. Now it's going to get delayed, but just... Yeah. It seems like it's really close for it to be announced and then get delayed, but I, I feel like it's probably going to get delayed to like June. Mm-hmm. They gotta perfect like, those macro transactions. Like, like two more months or something. Yeah, it'll be something <laughs> stupid. But so anyway, to give you a little bit of backstory, we just watched Rogue One. <laughs> and the showing was at eight p.m. It is now eleven something. Is it? Yeah. Oh wow. So this is fresh in our minds, fresh in our hearts, fresh in our souls. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fresh. So let's let's just dive right in. Jump you're, right in, you're Matt. Not, you're not a big Star Wars fan. Never really liked Star Wars. I, I watched the whole trilogy, the the original three, uh-huh. when I was like twelve. Uh huh. I was in fourth grade. And you were like, I don't know how to get it. Can I go back and read my Artemis Fowl book now, Dad? <laughs> Star Star Trek's better. Next generation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I that, I watched that when I was younger, so uh-huh. like I didn't I didn't I didn't understand that at all. But I was uh-huh. like, this is cool. I had the game <laughs> on Sega. Yeah, it was neat. I had a bunch of the toys. It was uh-huh. cool. Star Wars never cared. Never cared. That's fair. So yeah, that's that's my Star Wars feelings. Um, this was another Star Wars movie. Oh oh, but cats out of the bag. It if was, you wanted st- more Star Wars movies, they made another. They Star made Wars. another one, <laughs> and it's called Rogue One, a, a Star, Star Wars, Wars story. story, and it's uh. <laughs> Same old shit. <laughs> so, um, opposite of you, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Uh, we should have put all your books on the table. Yeah, I've oh, got a book. They're shelf. not canon. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, they got retcon. They're still real Boom. to me, like the WWE <laughs> <laughs> or WWF is whenever I first started watching it what? every Saturday. World Wrestling Federation. Yeah, I know. World Wildlife <laughs> Foundation. Yeah, <laughs> they got sued and had to change it. Yeah. But anyways, I have a bookshelf. Uh, With like two Star Wars books on it. No, how many is that? <laughs> I don't 20, probably like twenty something. It's yeah. all of the, uh, the the ones uh, with the invading alien species. Yeah. He's, he's only read the book, so he's never watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, thought the movies were interesting when I was little. Um, interesting. Yeah. Just interesting. Yeah, when I was little, and then I was given um, for Christmas Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Played the heck out of that game on N64. Okay, super awesome. Bringing it back to video games. Mm -hmm. Good job. And then ever like after that, I watched the movies religiously, like memorized them to like an embarrassing degree, and fell in love with Star Wars ever since. Um, So, with that frame of reference, Rogue One was disappointing to me. I felt like it was going through the motions of being a Star Wars movie without having any of the soul behind it. Sure, Uh, which. Is understandable that you would pick up on because you didn't really care for them to begin with. They never had a soul to begin with. You're right. They're just pew pew guns yeah. and like dorky hats, helmets. There was like even putting like aside like the Star Wars franchise and whatnot. There were a few things with the movie that I thought were like kind of off. Okay. Specifically with the sound mix. I didn't know. none of the sound effects felt like powerful to me. Maybe I don't know. That if could have been the theater too, though. It could have been. Yeah. But compared to, like, the score and the dialogue, they still felt, like, subdued. Mm-hmm. And it, it's a sh- I don't know if it's because I've been playing a lot of video games recently where, like, gunshots and laser noises are, like, prominent. And it's yeah. like, hey, yeah, this cool stuff's happening. 
but it still was like, mm, I yeah. can't really get as excited as I want to be for this. I would say, at least at least thinking to the theater, and again, I don't I don't I don't know for sure, but the um, the theater we were in tonight, a lot bigger than the ones we've been in for most recent movies, uh-huh. and the most recent movies we've seen, it's all been way too fucking loud. <laughs> That's true. So you know what I mean? So like we saw Doctor Strange, I think it was Doctor Strange, and that trailer like fucking like blew my eardrums out before it started, mm-hmm. um, and like we're in a much smaller room, so like the bass is going to try, like try, you know what I mean? Like uh-huh. the acoustics are going to be different. So like we're in a lot bigger room with a lot more. More padded chairs so like I feel like as far as like you know like feeling the sound effects kind of thing mm-hmm. like keep it in my mind. <laughs> I feel like uh, that could attribute to it again I mean it could you know who knows but in my head that could explain that because well, I can't I can't really think of a movie that I've seen like a like a, like a professionally like like a Hollywood movie where I'm like uh, the sound mix was off. Like, it, I feel like at this point it's very standard, and they just kind of all do it the same, especially for, like, Star Wars or Marvel or, you know, any kind of, like, sci-fi or action sort of movie, you know what I mean? That's true. But maybe they were trying something different. I don't know. That's just it just felt if Overall, it felt bland. Sure. Because, like, the score goes on for, like, 95% of the movie. Yeah, there was one scene where I was like, oh, music's not playing, and it meant more to me because of that. <laughs> Maybe they did it on purpose. Yeah, they could have, like, do the whole reverse thing. We're like, we're not going to emphasize the parts we care about with music. We're, we're going to emphasize the parts, the parts we, we care about with silence. silence. Yeah, fucking Jinx, you owe me a Coke. I, thank <laughs> I you. I bought you that. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like... Uh, it 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 felt like it was just going through the motions. Yeah, being Star Trek film like Star they, Wars. like they had yeah Star Star Wars. <laughs> they had a checklist and like they wrote they wrote the script and like we're shooting it like okay we did that we did that did that cool like all done. Mm-hmm. There's your movie. Enjoy it. Yeah, I, I from and again I don't I I don't know how much input I can give you on this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think definitely, so the, the, the way I'm looking at it is, like, everyone hated the prequels. People were, like, kind of done with Star Wars, you know what I mean? They were like, fuck it, don't touch it. Uh-huh. Don't touch it. They did episode eight. And, and seven. people Seven. seven sorry, yeah. seven. Did I confused seven. you earlier. Yeah. They did episode seven. People liked it. Criticisms were, it was a new hope again. Some of the criticism on that was that, well, maybe that was necessary to kind of, like, win, win the old fans back. Mm-hmm. Because, like... Kids that think Star Wars is cool from the cartoons and shit are gonna like it no matter what. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Like it's easy to please them. You gotta please the people that have, like feel like they've been disenfranchised by George Lucas. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This I feel like kind of isn't necessarily the same thing, but the fact that like I think for making a prequel to the actual original trilogy that like entered. You know what I mean? Like it's being basically made by the people that loved the original trilogy. So that's a thing. Like, like you got to think. Oh, I was telling you about that Gary Whitta thing where he talked about it, and he was like, "It's great. Everyone that's working on these movies are making them because they love Star Wars. Not like it's not George Lucas being like, oh, I have the greatest the idea. It's like I watched these and like I've always wanted to make mm-hmm. a Star Wars thing. So like that part makes sense. Not that that makes it okay, but the rationalization of why it might seem like a checklist mm-hmm. is like that combined with the fact that like they have to make sure that this one hundred percent. You know, outside of your like weird ship theory, like ship designs, we'll get to like that. <laughs> it like matches up to the first movie. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Like, like they they they, parale- have, they literally have to follow like this hallway, and it has to get to that point. Yeah. They're paralleling it, for different reasons, but uh, but the parallel is there for a reason yeah. at least. Yeah, that's then that's kind of what I mean. Is it's not? Uh, I it's I don't think it's any lack of like uh, creativity or anything. More than likely, it's probably. Like a Disney thing, being like you have to. This has to sell well. It, it, well, not, not <laughs> oh. that it has to sell, but like it has to, like it has to fit. It, like you're making a very, in in a, in a sense, a very un Star Wars story. Uh huh. But it has to fit Star Wars, and it has to lead up, and it like you know what I mean. Like it has to match the tone, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what's the easiest way to make it match the tone is to kind of go down the checklist and just apply those things to the idea that you had. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Because, like, a lot of people are like, oh, this is going to be cool. It's a heist movie. Like, it's different. Like, you've never had that in a Star Wars movie. It's always, like, Jedi fighting Jedi. Mm-hmm. And, like, we have, like, little to no Jedis in this movie. <laughs> How do we make that Star Wars? Add some droids for comedic relief. Add some weird aliens. You got a trading outpost. You got a bunch of ships and uh, some rebels and the, some characters that you will recognize. And, Good. And you see the Death Star being built a little bit. And yep. everybody's like, 
That's real big. Yeah. We didn't get a sense of scale in the first end of episode four. Disclaimer, I slept through all the unimportant parts. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I saw maybe the movie could have been 15 minutes long. <laughs> I think you watched more than that. <laughs> okay. I think you watched about an hour of a two and a 15 minute hour. Okay. Yeah. Could have been an hour long movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but getting back to the ship thing, there were things that like I felt were super inconsistent with what I know of Star Wars. Like uh, the first time they show you Avon 4, there was a B-wing on the ground. Those didn't show up until episode six. Like, those didn't exist until then, as far as I was aware. Episodes. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Here. Whenever they fight the second Death Star, B Wings fucking everywhere. B Wings and A Wings. Before that, didn't exist. But they're there now. Just, Where did they go? You just didn't see them. They were just hidden behind the one of the temples. They're like, go park those over there. Those are weird looking. Mm hmm. We don't like them. Um, yeah, I don't know. But don't then there was also, uh, in the final fight, there were a bunch of, like, unfamiliar TIE configurations that I thought came from way after the original trilogy. Like, in the books that happen between what I've read and the end of episode six, like, those TIE fighters came out of the woodwork. Like, there's one that looks like a kite. Yeah. It just has a single wing on the top with a little ball underneath. Mm -hmm. That's in the movie. Don't know why. My guess is that they make they, they, they say they don't put those in, right? Uh huh. Then you've got X wings, standard. Oh yeah, tie, you'd be you, going super bare bones. Yeah, so like that'd be even worse than what it was in my head. You know what I mean? Like if I'm watching it and like and if you're thinking like, man, this is like fucking like just like running down the list. I'm like, wow, this is straight up like we're watching a movie from the '70s again. This is boring as fuck. I'm glad they have the same fucking model of TIE Fighter all over the screen. That's real cool. It's 2017. Can you make something neater? You know what I mean? I don't know. That In my head, because I'm not, again, I'm not thinking about the fucking ship design. I don't get, <laughs> they all look the fucking same to me. You <laughs> yeah. say you saw a kite with a ball. I literally saw the same TIE Fighter anyways. I'm like, oh, they're the little bow tie things. Like, <laughs> X-Wing is great. And then there's the ships that are shaped like that. Like, <laughs> so like, yeah, I don't know. And, I guess, like, in a, in a canonical sense. Yeah, it's weird. But. It's know. something that bothered me. May not bother anyone, but. The, uh, I'm sure it bothered other people. I the, guarantee the, there are people Also, out there. in the final fight, okay. they had the fucking transport ships that they escaped Hoth in. They, those were just cruising around. Those don't have guns. They don't have anything. They're just, like, flying around. They look like fucking, like, beetles. What are they doing there? What are they doing there? Easter eggs. Yeah. It was probably fan service. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, that's probably what a lot of those weird ship things were. They were just like, wouldn't it be cool if this happened? Like, hey, in the background, someone's going to notice this, and they're going to be like, "Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, exactly. And I do, but I was also like, that shouldn't be there. Yeah. There's also just like seeing the AT-ATs, the chicken walkers, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the, the tree areas instead of the snow. Yeah. And you were like, ooh, that's different terrain for them. Mm-hmm. That was that was fine for me because I, I was like playing the Rogue Squadron games like that happened. So I was like, that's not unreasonable. No, well, neither are Tie Fighter exhibit not model. Not the timeline. Not in model. Not in my timeline. Not in, yeah, well. <laughs> Maybe what happens is did the kite did the kite ship get shot down? I think so. Yep. See what happens is they're like. Guys, we've got this. A prototype they've got, they've, yeah, or they've got this Death Star, and they're like, "Yo, we've got all these fucking Tie Fighters. Which one did the best?" And they're like, "Model A." And they're like, "Fuck it, make them all Model A." You get the movie. See, movie. By the time you're on episode six, you're like, "Model A is not doing so hot. What else we got?" And like, well, we've got <laughs> these like other older prototypes. We, we've improved on those. Like, cool. Send them out. F fucking shoot them up in the air and see what they do. Call me Disney. I got your back. Yeah, you'll you'll write them out of any holes. Mm -hmm. The movie, starring Shia LaBeouf. It's a good movie. You wrote that. Dig it out. Good oh, job oh, on that. Dig it. I read that book like six times. <laughs> I watched that movie like three times. Good. I was like, onions don't taste like that. <laughs> <laughs> I would never bite into an onion like that. Mm -mm. But anyways, those th those were our That's thoughts. It. Yeah, I don't like those Star Wars. I still don't like Star Wars. I'll give it. I'll give it episode eight, and then I'll see how I feel. But maybe, the, maybe my love is faded. Yeah, the idea is that Matt is getting too old and doesn't like Star Wars anymore. He's give finally, me my Star Wars. He's, fin back. he's finally seeing the truth for what the series really is, and that it's just a big ball of ungodly, cringy cheese. Like uh, how you could tell James Earl Jones has aged a lot. I don't know who that is. Voice of Darth Vader. Yeah. 
Yeah. He was like, uh, where it's are the a, plans it, it, for the Death yeah, Star? Yeah. I mean, he sounded like Darth Vader, but just older. He <laughs> yeah. sounded like an older person doing Darth Vader. I got. I was like, ah, oh, they got the same guy, but people would have bitched if they replaced him. When, That's if true. He's, if he's That's not dead. True. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. That's the only escape from Star Wars. Death. Death. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to end the episode. <laughs> Things are going to get real tasteless real quick. <laughs> um, you can catch us on Twitter. Yeah, I'm at underscore Matthew Creek. I'm at Nablith. You said that like a superhero. Ramy Ismail followed me recently. I don't know who that is. He made Nuclear Throne. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Did you say I like your game? Nope. Nope. He said, uh, bring it up back to video games real quick before we go. He said... What what are your hopes for in video games for 2017? And um, I said, I hope we see less AAA open world games, less indie roguelike games, and the active time battle system returns to JRPGs. And then he just followed me. I was like, okay, I guess you liked my answer. <laughs> so. <laughs> Fantastic. That, that works. All right, like, comment, subscribe. You can find us here every week on Friday. <laughs> <laughs>